Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Pim Talks About Shit. And before we begin, I would like to apologize for my low energy today, especially in this recording. The sad truth of the matter is that I am really tired and really drowsy because it is hot as hell over here. Like it's currently like 29 degrees Celsius in my apartment alone and outside it's a whole lot hotter. I wanted to record this video yesterday as well, but it was too hot to really work with. It's not a whole lot cooler today, but you know, gotta do something. I, I need to do something with my life, so you know, I can't, it can't be stopped by something as weather. This also means because I am recording now and I'm recording separately to a microphone, I had to turn off my ventilator so you don't hear my ventilators constantly going into the microphone, the sound of my ventilators. So you know, that's fun. Anyway, as you've probably read of the title right now, I want to talk about something called Songs of Conquest. So let's give a little bit of context first. So last... A little while ago, last Monday, I believe, no, not last Monday, a little while ago, there was a conference at the E3 video game thing, where you had the PC game conference, where, you know, they show all kind of, all kind of developers come, and they show all kind of new games they're working on, etc. Now, normally, I don't really care a whole lot about E3 anymore, because, truth to be told, I've been getting less and less interested in video games. But more importantly, I think E3 is kind of trash. <laughs> I think a lot of large AAA publishers and developers are kind of bad. They overhype their product and they don't deliver on that hype. And I think this is kind of bad. There's a, there's the, you, there's a whole video essay you can make about um, how the video game industry is actually kind of really trash and how they treat the developers really badly and underpay their workers and programmers. And etc. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Instead, I want to talk about something which has caught my eye for quite some time now. It is a video game called Songs of Conquest. Now, what what is Songs of Conquest? Songs of Conquest is a strategy game which was first announced on E3 2019. And it was, uh, at the time, they didn't really show a lot. They had a few graphics and they had like a music, a simple teaser trailer, you know, you know, like where you don't really, they don't really show off a whole lot of gameplay, etc. Um, but it did caught my attention for several reasons. First off, the developers in an interview, they also had an interview with the developers and they explicitly mentioned how they wanted to make a game that was kind of like a spiritual successor to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Now... I don't know if you people know this about me, but I fucking love Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Like, it is one of the oldest video games I have played in my life, and I love it. It's a really good game. It's like, probably on top of my list of my favorite games of all times. I don't think it's perfect, I think it has a lot of problems, and but it, I think it's great. It's really great. So, I want to I want to give a little bit of context about that first. Um, Heroes of Might and Magic is a series of games, video games, um, which can best be described as a hybrid between a turn-based strategy game and a role-playing game. Um, the way it works is you you basically you control a you're a player and you can con and you control these entities called heroes who are kind of like your generals in, in uh, of your armies. Each hero can have an army and they can equip stuff like artifacts which boost their stats and they have like all kinds of stats, attack, defense, um, spell power, etc. It kind of differs from game to game. And um, you know, what I always liked about Heroes of Might and Magic, how it wasn't just a strategy game, but it was also like an adventure. Like you could walk your heroes throughout the map you could encounter all kind of weird shit, like a Pandora's box, which could potentially open, and you know, you are, you you could either get a reward or you could have to fight an enemy, that kind of stuff. You could encounter new enemy creatures, 
but also have to do quests like you could have a Sears hut where they would say hey give me this artifact and I'll raise your stats that kind of stuff and you know it's a, it's a really really well fleshed out game especially the third game of the series which is by far the best game it's also a um, which is also a very a game that's upheld very high in the community now I won't I will probably make a here's a might and magic essay at some point so I probably will not go too much into it right now but uh, needless to say to, when I heard that uh, there was a new game coming out which aimed itself to be like a spiritual successor to this game I was very happy like we did we haven't had a good heroes of might and magic game since like 2005 2006 2007 and that that is if you count the expansions of heroes of might and magic 5 and like it was i'm really i was really happy to hear that like heroes 6 and 7 they were not received well and really i'll talk about it some other time when i when i finally get to making that essay but like it's really cool Anyway, I was really happy so to, that we finally get another old school style Heroes of Might and Magic game. So I began following the development of this game on and off. The creators had their own Twitter. And they had like, where they, where they looked, like post stuff and they had like devlogs and all kind of stuff. And honestly, I'm a little bit... I'm a, I'm, if I'm quite honestly, I was a little bit concerned. And the reason for this is because they seem to really focus on the graphical parts. Like the sprite work which are working on, which is amazing by the way, but I will get back to that. And they really seem to focus on that, on the sprite work. And so I was like, yeah, this is all nice, this all looks great, but tell me more about the gameplay. How will the game play? How will combat work? Will you have a town screen? How will how do you manage your towns? How do you how, what can you encounter on the map? What uh, you, I saw it, I saw that in the teaser that you had a day night system. How does this influence the gameplay? That kind of stuff. Like don't get me wrong. I think good graphics or at least good a good aesthetic is important for a game. But for me, especially a game like here, a, a strategy game falls or stands on its gameplay a good example would be endless legends which is a game i really try to like i really try to like the game i think the game has a lot of i think i think it's a very charming game it has a lot of good aesthetics and it looks good and eco economically speaking it's a good game but the combat of endless legends and many of the other games the developers have made is just I really did not like the combat. It's ba you have barely any control over it. It's not very good. So yeah, I was a little bit concerned about the development. Then, then a little while ago on that E3 PC game conference, they had a gameplay trailer, and. Um, I am not saying that I am hyped yet, but I am very happy with what I saw. So uh, we need. So I want to talk. I want to analyze the screenshots a little bit. Like they have their own website now, and they have like screenshots on there, and also like the gameplay trailer itself. And you know they revamped their website, and they they talk and they talk a little bit more about the gameplay and how the game will work. And I want to talk about a little bit, a little bit. So. I will. Uh, I should be able to show a screenshot up now. Um, one of the things I really like. One of the things I really liked was. Let's start with the good things. The combat. Like they finally showed combat in this in this series in this in this game, and I really like what it what it saw. It reminded me a lot of Heroes of Might and Magic Three, but like better. First off, um, first off, there are many reasons which I prefer, which I like. Like for example, you you can see that they have a little bit of an, an elevation on the combat screen, which is something Heroes of Might and Magic 3 does not have, um, which should make ranged combat a lot more interesting. Like the way Heroes of Might and Magic handles ranged combat is, I mean, it works, but I 
I was not, in hindsight, especially in our current dates, kind of old-fashioned and outdated. Basically, the way range combat works is you have a range unit which can shoot at units from a distance, but the, the, the amount of damage you do is dependent on... What was it called? The amount of damage you do depends on the... Really depends on the distance you are from your from the enemy. Your unit is from the enemy. So, for example, if your enemy is far away, your range combat would be, your range damage would basically be cut in half, which is good. But it also means that if you really wanted to really win, you had to basically take on more passive strategies of tactics of you know kiting your enemy into choke points and basically creating like all a lot of stacks of like one unit. So, which, which who can basically hold up the enemy, so you can sh so you can basically snipe them from afar, which is a very common strategy to do in Heroes of Might and Magic Three. So I like that you have elevation now, which m should make it a bit more clear how how to get ranged, you know, bonuses and etc. Um, another thing I liked was, of course, the sprite work. The sprite work is, and I've said it before, it's amazing. Like, they have some really good sprite artists on their team. It looks fresh, it looks vibrant, it looks like a living world. They have a lot of cool shaders, and it really, visually speaking, it looks great. I think this is a very good looking game. Yes, I know it's sprite, and I know it's not triple X. And I think, and I know that I'm very easy to please in this regard, you know. I think even the most pixely games, pixel art, and the most oldest pixel low resolution games can look good as long as, as long as it has good color composition but you know i really liked how this looked so that's yeah that's that there is one minor disappointment um was that as far as i can tell they're ditching the town screen idea that you had in heroes of might and magic in general so here's some mighty magic had something called a town screen. Basically, your town is basically your, are basically your main bases where you re recruit units and you learn new spells and do all kind of stuff, etc. And I'm kind of disappointed how they're basically ditching town screens. Like, I get why they're doing it. Like they're they're kind of opting for a more something more like Civilization VI or indeed Endless Legend, where you basically plop down buildings or districts on the map screen and you can recruit from there. And do stuff with that. Um, where you plop down stuff on the map screen. Ne right next to the your main. What is it called? Your main town is, is, as it is. And just plop them down there. Um, I'm kind of disappointed. Because here's a Mathematic has a separate screen. For building your buildings. And I always liked those. Because they were always kind of like, kind of like pieces of art. And you would in which 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 I always found to be, found to be really cool. You had like pieces of art. You would get a separate screen with like the pieces of art. Like if you had the Inferno Town, the Demon Town from Heroes Three, you could also see, see kind of lava, uh, a, a black smoke, a sun in the distance, and really cool. But like on the other hand, I kind of get why they got rid of them. Um, the main like town screens are a very nice. How do I say this delicately? They're a very 90s way of managing your economy. Like having a separate screen for that. It's a very old fashioned 90s way of doing that. And one thing I've a lot of more a lot of older a lot of newer strategy games seem to do is to have as little amount of clutter on your screen as possible. And down screens don't really fit in that in that design philosophy anymore. So I get why they do it. I'm still kind of disappointed because I wanted to see some cool stuff. But, um, you know, I get why they do it. And, you know, the rest of the game, art, art on the, in the game doesn't really disappoint when it comes to the art direction. So it's a minor loss. Um, but, like, you know, having a separate scheme for that all, it's a very 90s thing. You also see it in a lot of other games, earlier games even. Like, Master of Magic had a separate screen. Master of Orion kind of had it, the second game at least. Um, Civilization, the first game, had it. We had like a separate team sound screen. Civilization 3 had like a separate eye you could click on and you could see the way your city was developing. That kind of stuff. Um, so you know, it's not like you it's not like they're 
isn't, you know, it's a very old fashioned me design philosophy. So I can get why they're rid of it. But on the other hand, I'm still kind of like, eh, give me my beautiful sceneries, my beautiful panoramas. But you know, I get it. Um, finally, I want to talk about factions. As far as I can tell, um, this game will start off with four factions. Which is... I want to say little, because I'm used to Heroes of Might and Magic, where you have, like, on average, at least six. Six, six different factions, but... If I, in, in all honesty, I would rather have them develop four factions but flesh them out very well then have like six seven or eight factions but they're all clones of each other if you catch my drift so i really hoping that it looks like they have four factions one of them is basically gonna be your standard knight stuff human knight stuff um one of the other one is kind of like a kind of like a how do i say this delicately kind of like a merchant middle eastern themed gunpowder empire thing uh, the and the, you also have a third faction which I'm probably gonna play a lot is basically lizard men and swamp dwellers because you know swamp and lizards and uh, the final one is gonna be an undead faction I mean undead are a staple of basically the entire genre so you know it's really cool um, so yeah um, yeah basically there's not a whole lot else I want to talk about um, I'm not gonna. I'm going to say I'm very much looking forward. The game's gonna be released apparently somewhere early 2022, um, and I'm going. To, I'm, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic and not really be hyped, but like more cautiously optimistic and hoping that it will all work out very well. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to playing this, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. So yeah, th thank you all for watching this small little vlog in between video because you know I kind of wanted to talk about this, and I will probably when will I make? Uh, I wanted to, I mentioned before that I wanted to make a here's my medic video essay. Um, when will I cr finish to make that? That's a good question. If I'm completely honest, I'm kind of waiting for um, a mod update or for, or for the factory update for the Horn of the Abyss mod for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Um, this, is, is, this is a new faction which will be created by this fan-made unofficial expansion for Heroes of Might and Magic 3, a new kind of like a steampunk western faction, which looks really cool by the way. Speaking of good town screens. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's like, um, but it's gonna, t but um, you know, the thing with mods is updates are slow and you know, it's made by fans, so you know, I'm not expecting it anytime soon. Um, traditionally, this mod only updates once a year, every time, every time, but uh, with New Year on New Year's Eve. This mod updates around that time period, so I'm going to be waiting of making this essay until then. However, if I get any indication beforehand, it's going to take longer than that, and it's going to take a long time. I will probably make the essay earlier because if I have to wait several more years for this update which you know if any mod developers are watching this take your time don't wait for me don't rush rush it but like if i'm gonna wait for that yeah i'm gonna probably be doing this a little bit you know earlier because i really want to make this video at some point and i don't want to wait till the end of time for it so yeah um thank you for watching and i will see you all some other time bye